we started watching Love on the Spectrum, the U.S. one. We just started it. So we're not yeah. deep into it. Uh, first of all, I think I'm a bigger fan of autism in Australia. Me and too. Just, um, well, welcome. Welcome to your mom's house. Ladies and gentlemen, this episode is brought to you by Satva, S-A-A-T-V-A dot com slash the shit. Go there and get $200 off any mattress of your choice. I'm a huge fan. I've slept on all of them. You got to try one. Nice. Mm, I wish Bauhaus would cover that one. Oh, yeah? <clears throat> yeah. It's a great goth song. They might. You it's never a goth know. Tune, yeah. You never know. Um, I have a huge announcement. I didn't even uh, oh. let you guys know. But I'm going to go ahead and break it right here, right now. What? Ladies and gentlemen, the glove is back. <gasps> oh, my God. I'm crying. Oh. Yeah. It's been so long. What? what ha yeah. What happened? I just got my fucking mojo back, you know. The glove is back. The glove is back. Yeah. Where has it been? I mean, you know, there's a few. There's like six dozen around, but I mean, it's fucking hot now. You know, summer's here. <laughs> you gotta let them know. You got to stunt on these hoes, and sometimes you wear different shit, and I'm just like, pow. Dang. You know? Yeah. yeah. So, so why did you choose? Now, this one's the football glove, right? Uh, yeah, it's a receiver's glove. Jesus Christ. What made you bring this particular glove? Like, what inspired this choice today? I mean, this shit's fire, dude. Look it at that. It is fire. It's hot. <laughs> yeah, it's dope. So are you making a return to Tom Segura, the glove comic? Well, I'd never stop being the glove comic. Even when the glove's off, I have like a, you know... There's a glove. There's a still a glove there. A persona. Yeah. Sometimes you can't see the glove. That means I'm not wearing a glove. That's true. The glove is in your heart. Well, the glove's in your heart. The glove is, is you know, it's in the air. The yep. glove's in your mind. Glove is in the heart. Yeah. This is just a physical representation of a glove. I got you. You know? I got you, bro. Don't you remember, like, this is not a pipe? Yeah. Se, se sin pa un pip. Se sin pa un pip. This is not the glove. Yeah. It's a representation of the glove. Right, yeah. This is just so people understand that I'm wearing a glove. Even when I take it off, the glove's still there. So you're saying that you, but you always feel the power of the glove. Oh, yeah. Powerful. Yeah. It's yeah. Your, your charm. So yeah. To speak, your amulet. That's right. Cool, dude. Well, we're all stoked to see it back. I'm and sure. And I'm excited to see what you do with this power. Yeah. I might, might put it on some fat models that give me <gasps> shit online. Dang. <laughs> Dang, I posted a video you get the glove. of a fat model in a bikini. Oh my God. I saw that video. Everyone saw it. Fuck. I know everybody's like, great work. This one's amazing. I I'm mean, like, yeah, it's pretty that good. was a 
big girl. Yeah. And you know what's interesting is that I mean, I've, she was fucking huge. I, oh, huge. And she walked down the runway with confidence. I guess that really is the whole thing about um, body types. You know when, like, they tell you, you tell you this when, like, when you're, like, in high school even, like, especially as a, as a guy, you'll hear, you know what girls like? Confidence. True. Girls like confidence. You can do anything if you have confidence. And you see this chick walk down the runway with just mountains and rolls of just fat, just like bat, like just enormous, you know, enormous. And she was like, just fully like, I'm a bad bitch. Yeah. Took her glasses off and you're like, all right, yeah, I see you. I see why, you know, you're in this job. Yes. Yeah. And it's interesting because I, I watched it initially and I was like, I should make fun of her. And then I was like, she's got some swag. Like yeah. I, I like, you're right. Swag points. Yeah. You're like, I don't need to write anything. You'll make fun of her on your own. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And her name was like Iowa model, which is like Iowa, Iowaska. Oh, right. Like what Nadav wrote on yeah. the last show was yeah. so funny. We, yeah. we were discussing Iowaska and he wrote Iowaska. He, he, it's a hard word to spell. It is. Yeah, it I is. don't know how to spell it. There's a lot of silent letters in there. It is, a lot, it is a tough word, but he did write the state Iowa, Iowa yeah. and then ska. Ska. Yeah. Which is kind of clever, resourceful yeah. when you think about it. It is. I mean, he got the point. I knew what he was saying, you know? Okay, let me try sp- spelling Iowa. It's like when a, when a deaf person goes, <laughs> you're like, oh, they're hungry. You know, I get it. Well, yeah. Hold on. I don't speak sign language, but I get it. Yeah, you get that. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'm going to try spelling Ayahuasca. Ready? Tom, are you listening? Okay, yeah. Is it A-Y-A? Yeah. H? Yeah. J? No. I- wrong. What? Has them Wrong. <laughs> Ronk, you fucking foreigner. You fucking say it like that too. You I did fucking too. Ronk. Hongo. Ronk. A Y A H. Why? It's not a J. After the H? Again. No. Yeah. And then. I, U. Uh, U. Yeah. A. Yeah. S. Mm-hmm. C. Yeah. A. Yeah. Try spelling ayahuasca. Not with a K, dog. There we go. Yeah. Oh, it's a, it's a silent K in here. <sighs> okay. That was, that was, uh, yeah, you did, you did it. He said there's a silent K in Iowa. I, I mean, you know, he really is. I, I found it out. He's not retarded. He, <laughs> he is a terrible speller. That He's is, a terrible speller. And that was from the beginning. I remember I remember like one of the first weeks we were working on something and I saw him spell. I was like, the fuck? And he was like, He's like, I'm a bad speller. You are. Yeah. But bad spelling informs uh, you know, your use of language, your vocabulary. Googling. Yeah. All that stuff is is that the root of it is kind of your spelling. Yeah. And what was your what was your best subject in school? Best subject. Yeah. What did you do well in? Anything? What was your best? Art. Art. Uh, I was actually really good at math and physics. Okay, I so you that. were more math minded. Yeah, there yeah. you go. But English and stuff, no, no. <sighs> just rough. Right over, yeah. right over my head. And you know, it's actually funny. Any term paper that I wrote, I was never going to get better than a B because I never did spell check. So I just handed it in where every other word was misspelled, and I was just Jesus. like, the way she goes. You know what I was like <laughs> in, in English? I didn't. Um, it was so lazy. I, w- I didn't, I, I was a decent speller. Like mm-hmm. I was, you know, I did well, somewhat well, pretty well on spelling tests. I didn't mind write, like writing uh, homework. Like there's a paper due. I, I, I kind of enjoyed the writing process. And, um, but I never did well at the, like the rules of English, you know? I, 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 all the, the same so I would way. bomb those. And I, I didn't care. I was like, I speak English. The fuck do I need? Who cares if it's a pronoun? I don't know what a past participle is. Yeah. I don't know what a dangling participle. I don't know what, the co- conjugate the verb goes before the thing. All I don't that, know any of that same. Shit. I was like, who cares? And I would just, <laughs> you know, then they write you up and they tell you, you did all this wrong. And I'm like, yeah, you <laughs> know what? You and I, we're speaking English right now. Give a fuck. Um, hey, it's and also, enough. I, you know, I was putting effort into the writing, like the actual writing assignment. Same. Yeah. But the rules of it, I did not care. Yeah. I was actually a good speller. Mm-hmm. I was always good in English. I would get, you know, I was like in advanced English. I'm, I'm going to brag a little wow. bit. Wow. Wow. You did. 
Yeah, I was always in advance. Thank you. It's the one subject I excelled at. Um, everything else, pretty retarded. Math, total retard. Total retard. Oh, yeah. Well, I took Algebra 1 two years in a row. Like, yeah. They had to split it up into two years for me. That's how stupid I was. In Here's how retarded not only I am, but I think <laughs> the school was that I went to. I got a fucking F, right? A fucking F. You F failed. For fucking F. <laughs> failed Algebra 1. That's freshman year in high school. Fucking, as, like, you're as dumb as it gets. <laughs> Sophomore year, I take uh, uh, geology? No. Uh, um, geometry. Geometry. And I get like a B, B plus. And they're like, yep. oh, nice recovery. Junior year, they put me in algebra two. I failed algebra one. <laughs> Hard F. Hard big F. F. Big, big fail. Yeah. Senior year, they're like, you're not going to fucking graduate yeah if you don't take some and i went to like tutors all the shit i was like mm, i don't get it they basically i think they gave me a d to be like otherwise this kid's not going to graduate mm. so they gave me a d freshman year of college um oh this is what keeps me from going to a certain college mm. i was going to go it's in the book i was going to go to randolph macon in in virginia they're like, you need to take a math course over the summer because your math scores are horrific. I go, I'm not fucking taking a math course. So that's why I end up going to Lenore Ryan. When I go there, they have like entry, like basically the basics of math. It's the only math requirement in college. You, have, you don't take any more math courses if you take this. I take it, I fail it. Fail. I fail it. Not even like a C, no, a D. I fail it. I do so poorly. And I go, I don't care. They're, they're, and then, like, moving forward, you don't have to take any more math classes. So I take no math classes, right? Second semester, sophomore year, junior year. Beginning of senior year, they're like, you're not going to graduate college if you don't take this basic math class. So I'm like, fuck. I put it off till second semester. So it's the last semester. And I go into it. I'm the only senior in it. It's all <laughs> It's like Freshman. 18 year olds yeah. right out of high school. Yeah. They remember I feel everything. like I'm a man, yeah. like a grown yeah. man with kids. Yeah. <laughs> and the same thing. And I just buddied up with the professor. Oh. And like we, he, we, he liked boats. And I was like, I love boats. And he started talking about boats. So, and then he would call me in. He would try to help me out. And I was like, look, man, I'm fully fucking retarded. I don't <laughs> yeah. know how to do this. Yeah. And he gave me like a passing score. Just nice. To, yeah. So like a, like a D. Or maybe it was, maybe he gave me even like a C just to like get you. out of there. You know? But see, isn't that more valuable? I think the fact that you learn a bigger lesson, which is like life is negotiable. It you, is. People, people make things happen. Funny thing is I, I'm not, I don't hate numbers either. You know, I'm not like a, I don't run numbers by me. Like I, I like it. I like the data. I, I you know. I'm not opposed to a conversation involving a lot of yeah, numbers. Yeah, that's true. You're quite good with them, actually. But I just, I did so poorly at those. And it's like, it doesn't dictate everything. It doesn't mean that you can't operate just because you didn't do well at an algebra class. Here I am 20 years later, I'm the fucking glove comic. You, know? <laughs> you can count on that, bitch. You think my peers are doing this shit? I don't think so. I don't fucking think so. Now, uh, we haven't played the opening of the show, so let's get this opening going, and then we'll get back into this right away, okay? Yeah. I'm hey, fatty! <laughs> Nobody gives a fuck if you lose weight, you fat fucking pig. <laughs> Nobody gives a fuck about you. Why would they? All you do is consume. You don't give. You sit in your fucking house, you suck money up the fucking government, and consume the internet. Scrolling all fucking day. Scrolling. It's all you do. Nobody gives a fuck about you. <laughs> Who is Randy? I like that guy. He's right. Yo, mom in the fucking stand. Welcome, welcome, welcome to your mom's house with Tom Segura, Tom Segura, and Christina Pajitsin. Christina Pajitsin. Welcome to your mom's house. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Now. 
Nice. We're back with Cole Robinson. Uh, oh, yeah. This second guy. time in a few weeks here. But um, yeah, I really like the message. I do too. He's right. Uh, I love the aggression. I love the name calling. Mm -hmm. um, I like that you're, you don't, you know, dance around the subject matter at hand. Definitely. Um, so here's a little more Cole. Fuck! If you want people to fucking give a fuck about you, get the fuck out of your house and go fucking give some value, you fat fucking cunt. You're useless. You're fucking useless. You can't go outside because you're scared of judgment, you fat whore. So you have no reason to leave because, God forbid, you don't even have to fucking walk to the grocery store anymore to buy your fucking junk food. You can just get it delivered. You can hide behind a mask. Okay, take off the fucking mask, you idiots. Fuck. <laughs> Dude. This guy's killing it. Crush it. And can I tell you why? Yeah. Everything he's saying is how I talk to myself. Yeah. That's why I'm successful, guys. Yeah. This is how successful people talk to themselves. It's not loving in here. This is just like a long, like, like really spelled out version of you get the glove you yeah. know that's all he's saying <laughs> yeah you get that's the all glove. he's saying you and get the glove this is kind of my inner dialogue Dude, a lot let me tell you something yeah. successful people do not sit around i i imagine going you're great everything you do is perfect you're yeah. fine as you are what you do is you go you're a fucking idiot yeah get up do something better make yourself better yeah earn love because no one loves you this is why you listen it. you gotta hit your kids here's more yeah. of this guy Today's episode of Your Mom's House is brought to you by Simply Safe Home Security. Here at Your Mom's House, we believe home should be the safest place on earth for every family. That's why we use and recommend Simply Safe. Simply Safe is advanced whole home security that puts you, your home, and your family safety first. Here's why we love it. We use it here at the office. It's easy to set up. Um, we can see who is coming up to the house, or in this case, your mom's house, which is our home slash office. Simply Safe offers comprehensive protection not only against intruders and burglary, but against home hazards from flooding to fires with 24-7 professional monitoring. Simply Safe's agents take action the moment a threat is detected, dispatching police or first responders in an emergency, even if you're not home. You can customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash your mom. Go today and claim a free indoor security camera plus 20% off with interactive monitoring. Go to simplysafe.com slash your mom. This episode of Your Mom's House is also brought to you by Theragun. Don't let the stress of daily life weigh on your body, whether you're an elite athlete like me or you're someone else like you. Just trying to make it through the day tension-free, Theragun can help. Theragun is the handheld percussive therapy device that releases your deepest muscle tension using a scientifically calibrated combo of depth, speed, and power, and it's just as quiet as an electric toothbrush. The Gen 4 Theragun doesn't just feel good. It gets to the source of the pain by releasing tension using Theragun's signature percussive therapy, which goes 60% deeper than vibration alone. This thing is unbelievable, man. Whenever I use the Theragun, I feel like I'm melting. Like I'm literally melting away. I go into like this meditative state that I would, uh, God, I wish I could give it to you all. Well, I guess I can if you buy a Theragun. Uh, Theragun is trusted by 250 professional sports teams like Real Madrid and elite athletes like Paul George, DeAndre Hopkins, Maria Sharapova, hundreds of customers, and of course, me. Try Theragun for 30 days starting at only $199 right now. Go to Therabody dot com slash m o m all lowercase and get your Gen Four Theragun today. That's therabody dot com slash m o m therabody dot com slash mom. Okay, don't blame diets. Okay, don't blame everybody else for your shit. Okay, it's you, you idiot. Okay, I don't give a fuck if you lose weight. I don't care. I don't care. That's why it always cracks me up when I see. People send me messages like, oh, fuck, I couldn't lose weight on the snake diet. Like they're trying to make it sound like it's a diet and trying to make it sound like it's my fault they didn't lose weight. Okay? So number one, I don't give a fuck if you died tomorrow. I don't. I fucking don't. I don't care. 
Why the fuck would I fucking care? <laughs> <laughs> I like that he said that they're calling it a diet, and it's his diet, and it's called the snake diet. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, he's like it's calling it a diet like they're wrong, but it says snake diet on his shirt and it is his diet. I know. He also went to another level with I don't care if you die. Mm -hmm. That's pretty rad. Mm -hmm. You're not offering, you're not giving, you just consume, you're a fucking pig. You're a fucking pig. If you want to fucking build gratitude, be happy, you gotta face fear. Okay, if you're not willing to face any fear on a day to day basis, you should be doing at least one scary thing each day. Does it have to be jumping out of a plane? No. Go up to a stranger pig. Go up to a fucking stranger. Go talk to your neighbor. Go fucking talk to the little old lady next door. Make friends with her. Fuck. You need to develop face-to-face -face fucking relationships with people. Okay, stop relying on your toxic friend, the fucking internet, you idiot. Real fucking people. Fuck. Until next time, stop fucking eating, fatty. I couldn't agree more. This guy is great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this guy, I mean, look, the reason it's so, people were talking like this normally 20, 30 years ago. This is every other motivational person. Stop eating, you fat fuck. This is literally like. You know what this also is? This is, this is revolutionary now because nobody tells, is, this tells is, it like it is anymore. This is the dialogue that people have about a fat person when they're not around who's who's like being like i really like well, well you know what i mean like if you know someone who's like really <laughs> overweight and they're like i just want to lose weight every like people when that person leaves they're like the fat fuck just needs to get up and get moving and stop complaining and making excuses yeah. you know like they're they might not say it with the same energy and yes venom, yes, yes but they're they're essentially saying that they're like the guy just fucking sits around all day i know you know, I know, and, and he's right. You're not giving. Anything. He's just doing you're like consuming. a super aggressive way about. Yeah, but he's right. You're not. What are you giving to the world? You're it just a consumer. Yeah, metaphor. Yeah, yeah. You consume literally. You yeah. You sit. You consume the 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 waves of of nothingness that the the endless internet can provide, and then you feed yourself, and you don't. It's like that fucking. It's like you're one of those characters. What's that great E Wally? Yeah, that Wally. That um. Mm, oh, that, those. Yeah. That movie, you know, the yeah. animated film. And that's what like the planet becomes, right? Mm -hmm. It's like over, and then they're out on that ship, and everybody is like a a pig, though. Mm -hmm. Every like when you go to the the pig, the ship. If you do the ship in space, like the the humans that are in this film, I mean, it's a fantastic. It's um, such a good movie. It's like it's just people are. He, he but Wally Pixar ship in space. <laughs> <laughs> And look at what we're looking at. <laughs> right. The ship in space and Wally that you asked for. Well, maybe the the people that are on the ship. <laughs> look at this. Here, hold on. Ship in space. People. Yeah. There we go. Look what we got. We got exactly it. what yeah. you wanted. That's, that's it. <laughs> what he's describing, though. God. What he's describing. Is this. Is that representation. Is that, you know? Yeah, it's just getting super fat. It's true. It's and look, true. I realize this. There's probably somebody listening or watching who is in that mindset, you know, like is doing this. And they're like, yeah, it doesn't really help me when someone yells and says shit like that. And I get that. It doesn't, it doesn't work for everybody. It doesn't work for everybody. Yeah, you know? it works for me. But, you know, you can still, you can, you can fucking start doing something. You know, you can, you can, and then, and this, the sweeter way of saying it is like, go outside, go outside, you know, leave, leave your place, get off the couch, yeah. throw out, throw out some soda, um, eat some healthy food Cause and it, it do is, a little movement. That is a mental problem. That, that's what he's saying. This is yeah. an emotional mental problem of sitting on the couch and just consuming television, consume, consume, consume. swiping and all yeah. that low energy, low frequency behavior. It's just low frequency behavior. Yeah. That's all that is. You're just, you're, baiting. just you're sitting there baiting. You're baiting, man. God, yeah. that was such a funny yeah. movie. Yeah. That was the best role Dak Shepard ever had was Idiocracy. Yeah. What a funny fucking movie. Pretty great. That is. It's true. He's bait. You're just baiting. You're stroking your dick. Yeah. That's all you're doing. All day. And you're not giving back to the world. You're just one step away from death. Yeah. yeah it's true. Sucking on your mommy's tits. Do something. Sucking your thumb. Do Can I something. tell you the one thing I do like about social media? Yeah. Is that... It does make people output, 
Rather, you're not just a passive consumer. Well, for instance, for the era of television, right? You were just a passive consumer, a passive Oh, the observer. era of television. The, what uh, did I say? It, it sounded like you said the Arab television. Oh, the Arab like, tele the Arabs. Yeah. I was like, first of all, why are you watching Arab television? How do you know this? The era. Era, of, era. Yeah. Uh, meaning you're just a passive, you just took in the advertising, you just, you were, yeah. you were hypnotized. At least what's interesting about social media is that it's somewhat interactive, yeah. interactive. So you're actually putting content out, you're, you're interacting theoretically with what you're being advertised yeah. from to. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. TV was so passive. You're just like a zombie. Totally, yeah. totally feed me. Coca-Cola. You can't actually take some action. You know what I have, I have zero respect for? Mm. You ever see these fucking fucks on social media that have no posts and no followers, but only follow? So they're like these like, they're just like, they, they feel like, um, like peeping toms, you know, like it's yeah. somebody who just Lur like, are they lurkers? Yeah. What are they called? Like hanging out in the, in the bushes or something. Like they just watch everything and they, they comment, but they don't, yeah, they're private accounts and they, they get to throw things out, but you know, not take any of oh, it. It's, yeah. just, it's just such a, what it is, is it's small dick energy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's really what it is. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's like just, Yelling shit at somebody, but then you hide. Yeah, and it's just fucking yeah. bitch, dude. It's really it's it's bitch tit energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is bitch dick energy. Bitch tit energy. Yeah, bitch tits. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can I tell you something? Yeah. Uh, Kim Kardashian is dating this Pete Davidson. Right. You know how it happened? Uh, how? So she did SNL with okay. Pete, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and then. They they have they do a scene together where they kiss, and she's like, "Oh, I felt a little something something when I was kissing Pete Davidson." So you know they always have those after party, the after show party. Uh -huh. He doesn't go to the party, and she's like, "Oh well, where's Pete Davidson? I want you know God, this is the one guy that's ignoring Kim Kardashian essentially." Right, right, right. So you know what she does? She texts him and she goes, "Hey, I, I heard so much about this big dick energy. I'd like to know more." Isn't that wild? No. I heard the story from Chase, and she doesn't lie. Wait, wait. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do I mean? She, like, she has on on authority. No, no. I think there was a story that like had come out, like how did they met or some interview that she saw and Kim Kardashian. Oh, it was Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Sorry, the new one, the new season. She talks about how she met Pete, and that's the story she reveals on Keeping Up with the Kardashians, the new one. And and that was the actual text she sent. Yeah, she's like, "What's up with this? I hear about this big dick energy." Like let's let's. So that was her so way much of being about like, this big dick energy. Like, what's let's up? Gets on it, yeah. Jesus, I know. Isn't that wild? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a great opener. It's a it's fantastic opener to hear. I think if you're a guy, because you're right, because of his big dick energy rumors. See? Okay. Now, do All you right. think she meant the energy or the dick? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's is it a veiled? thing of like hey i heard you got a big one or is she really like hey i want to see your swag well it sounds like the thing is your ener is ener like she's saying specifically energy right now with pete the rumor there are uh, not just that i mean i've never heard about the energy i've heard about his actual penis right yeah right that's so, that, that's, that's the debate i'm having you know i'm not sure i same well no i i see what you're saying i'm saying that that Ener it says energy. So she was like, I want to see your swag. But I mean, it's tied to the fact that he also has a big dick. Yeah. Which he does. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I've heard. You, listen, I've never met somebody more obsessed with dicks than you. I mean, <laughs> particularly big ones. There's such a twinkle in your eye right now. <laughs> <sighs> what? Am I not a woman? I mean, look. I mean, you always I go know. to this. Am I not a woman? I mean, I'm the only woman here besides Heather, and yeah. you know. Yeah. Is that, what you, is that what you two talk about what all day? Would you, what, 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 I mean, what would you want me to be into? You want me to be into I pussies mean, instead? I, I like dick. Yeah. I like dicks, babe. That's why I like you. Okay. I like your big old sloppy dick. I like it. There's no rumors about me. <laughs> well, let's start them now. Um... Yeah, 
Pete is known as a, as a horse cock, is what they call him. <laughs> yeah. This is just the truth. No, I know. Milton Burl was known to have a biggie too. Yeah. Which is funny. You have, you have like a special folder in your head. I do. <laughs> Did you want me to continue? Because I yeah, can't. Keep going. Okay. Um, episode two, season one of Euphoria. There are 35 dicks in that episode. You uh, Listen, I got a good topic for you for your next therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> it's what's going on with you and dicks. Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman? That's Biggie, right? I don't know. I mean, I feel like it's a solid guess. Because didn't he know. break his dick banging Carmen Electra? He said he broke it three times. Yeah. It's tough to break small ones. I get what you're saying. <laughs> Tommy Lee. Verified. 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 <laughs> Blue check mark next to his dick. Yeah. That's a really good idea. <laughs> John Hamm. Oh, I, I didn't. Oh, right, 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 yeah, yeah. We discovered that on this show. Yeah, yeah. And he's a good looking guy. So he's like, the, you know what I mean? He's like like uh, classically handsome. Yeah. John Hamm looks like just, you know, leading man kind of yeah. face. And he's got a fucking hog on him. What do you think Henry Cavill's got? That I don't know. There's there's not dick rumors about him. No dick rumors. Can I tell you what I think he really has? Hmm. Probably like a normal dick. I think average, yeah. yeah. Which, I'm like, yeah. Which, guess what? It's probably great. It's probably great. Would you give him a, a tug on his tongue? What if he was like, my balls are so backed up? Would you help him? I'd have to ask permission first from you. Well, you got it. So I do? Sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah? Yeah. I didn't realize he played Superman. I, I changed my answer to our discussion we had a million years ago. Like, Which, who do I bang? Yeah. I was like, Batman. But I forgot that he played Superman. I'm yeah. going to go ahead and change that to, to Superman. Him? So you would, you would tug his stuff, though? Yeah, of course. Okay. I mean, you would probably, wouldn't you talk his stuff? He's fucking perfect. He could probably talk me into it. He's perfect. He is perfect. Yeah. He's perfect? Well, look at him. Yeah. That mustache I don't like. No, the mustache is queer as fuck, but I like the other stuff going I mean, on. He's got great eyes, great facial structure. Yeah, he's just... Hair, bod. Uh, dude, yeah. really? God, we got to find out about that cock from somebody. <laughs> We have to. There's got to be someone that knows. We're putting it out there. I like how you said it. Like, we got to know. We do. We got to. And by the way, when I say we got to, it's Christina. She's got to (laughs) know. She wants details. I mean, if if one of your friends was like, Guess what? I hooked up with Henry Cavill. I, I want to like, know. Would you be like, come into this room right now and like sit? Like, of course. Me. Like, tell me everything. Tell me the dick sitch. No, that's what you would start with. Yeah, dick yeah. sitch. I've yeah. done it before. I've, I've been around you. You're always like, <laughs> oh, you hooked up last night? How was that dick? Like, <laughs> that's the first question I always ask yeah. another girl. Yeah, well, or when a girl's like, oh, I'm sitch. dating this new guy. He's got, Christina's like, what's that dick like? And so I'm like, <laughs> Well, it's important. Nothing else. She's not like, what's he like? It's like, so she's like, is that dick? How's that dick? What's his dick sitch like? I'm like, Jesus Christ. Because a dick sitch can make or break a sitch. You understand? <laughs> a, 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 a bad, I'm telling you, like, you don't, you guys want to hear it. The truth is, Ugh. listen to me. Do you yeah, want to know? I do want to know. <laughs> I do. A dick can tip, it's a tipping point, okay? Okay. Listen, I'm are you listening. paying attention? I'm listening, yeah. For instance, let's say you're on the fence about a guy. Right. But he's got great dick sitch. Right. You're going to lean positively because you're like, yeah, but that dick sitch is pretty great. Uh Uh-huh. If you're leaning negatively and his dick sitch ain't so hot, you're going to go tip negative. So if you're on the fence about a dude, that dick can make or break him. Yeah. I mean, I've made mistakes many times. What an elegant and just beautiful way to summarize the situation. Yeah. Yeah. But Kim K knows what's up. She mm. leads with that. So she's like, I'm, a, I'm, I'm going to lean positively. And she likes big ones. We know this. Ray J. We all saw yeah. the video. She's obviously into Pete. Big dicks. Yeah. I couldn't believe how big his dick was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Kanye probably has a normal dick, I'm guessing. So she went, but she married the normal dick. We don't, but we don't know what his dick sitch is. Yeah, you would know. You it, think so? For you sure. You think it would get out? If you're that famous, it would get out. Yeah. Mm, if you're that, I mean, no one talks about it. It's probably just normal. And he's had a lot of lovers. Probably, yeah. Paramours. Yeah, they would, they would be, ta- I mean, it's probably just like literally a normal 
That dick. girl that's like, yeah, I did my makeup myself. Yeah. I was Josh Safdie's meows when he did uncut jobs. What? She was she was uh, having relations with Kanye. Oh, 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 right, 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 Julia right Fox. after Julia yeah. Fox. Yeah, because <laughs> she's so funny, dude. I love her. Here's when you would know about a real famous person's dick if it was really crazy small or really crazy big. Yeah. That's when you. That's when it would make the rumor mill. That's so true. Yeah. I don't know if I've heard any crazy smalls rumor mill. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to, I think I said it'd have to be like, like really notable. Yeah. And the person would probably have to be probably kind of an asshole for someone to, to be reporting that. You know what I mean? Like Gosh. spreading that. I don't know. Or That's, at least they get around a lot. So like there would be so many people that had the information about it. Yeah. 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 That's what she goes. She goes, yeah. I did it myself. <laughs> yeah. So that dick sitch can really make a sitch. Uh huh. Yeah. It can. It can make or break. I'm telling you. I'm I believe, telling I believe you. Because there have been guys where I was like, no, oh, no, the dick sitch ain't too great either. And then you're like, it's done. It's but if it were done. great, then you you stay in a little bit longer because yeah. you're like, this dick sitch is pretty great. I only yeah. give up to the dick sitch right now. Fuck, you're such a fucking whore. <laughs> So, this episode of Your Mom's House is brought to you by Shady Rays. Sunglass season is here. There's no better option than our friends at Shady Rays. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers a world class product that's just as good as any expensive pair we've worn. Durable frames and extremely clear polarized lenses for outdoor living and beyond. That's not all. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear. Every pair is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they told us they will send you a brand new pair. No questions asked. Get as crazy as you want this summer and wear your Shady Rays with confidence. They also provide 10 meals to fight hunger in America with every order and have donated over 20 million meals to date. Look good in your shades and feel good by making an impact. If you don't love them, exchange for a new pair. Return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop with Shady Rays. I have bought myself probably 15 pairs. I love them. I have them everywhere, all over the house, in different cars. I travel with them. Shady Rays are awesome. Exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving you their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com. Use the code HOUSE50 for 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 200,000 people. So what's perfect? What's, what's you great? Married. What's you great? You married her. What's great? I'm not telling you this stuff. What's great? What do yeah. you mean what's great? What I married what's great. No, 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 no. That, this is great. This is not a You great. think that, first of all, first of all, you think I'm going to choke you. I want to scoop out your eyeballs. I want to be creepy with you. All that stuff. That could have leaned me out, right out. But I was right. like, his dick sitch is pretty tight. So I'm going to stay in this. How do you think you stuck around for so long? <laughs> I should have dipped out long ago, my man. There were a lot of red flags in the beginning. And I was like, but his dick sitch is tight. Yeah. I'm serious. That's why we're here. Huh? That's a good point. And so is life. It comes full circle, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you got a good dick, Sitch. When you see my dick... I turn into a telescope. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Bay. Bay, yeah. Wow, what a, what a lovely talk. <laughs> I'm sure we're going to hear about dick sitches because of this talk, too. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm sure there are women out there listening that have stayed in relationships longer than they should have because that dick sitch was it was pretty great. Yeah. And then there's girls that pieced out prematurely, maybe, because the dick sitch wasn't so great. Ladies, why don't you uh, let us know what your um, dick sitches were like? It can make or break. Yeah, it could be good or bad. Uh, your mom's podcast at gmail.com. I recently had a conversation, not quite like this. Um <laughs> Somewhat similar, 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 yeah. Um, about how long you would stay in a relationship where um, sex was unbelievable, right? Person is unbelievably attractive, like so hot, unbelievable sex, mm -hmm. but brought nothing else to the table. <laughs> My theory was that the older you were, the mo less you would tolerate it, right? Like if you're 21, you're fucking baby Zolo. 
You'd be like, I'll ride this shit out for a few years. Oh, yeah. You waste some good years on that chick. Once you're in your 40s, you'd literally be like, that was a fun week. But I'm not, you know what I mean? You'd be like, because you value your, your time so much more the older you get. You realize how precious your time is. Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, See, I, I might beg, I'm, I'm Yana. Yeah. I might beg to differ here. Okay, go ahead. I might go longer on the dum dumb who's really attractive simply because we're just banging, right? Like I'm not going to have to talk to them or spend time with no, them. This is a relationship. Oh, shit. That's tough. That's the point. The point is when you're 20s, you don't care probably. You're like, well, I guess this is a relationship. You don't even know. You don't even have like a real gauge for, your, for relationships. I mean, at this point... I can't even tolerate. This is my point. I know. I know. I thought you just meant like hookupsies, not like, not like just, I thought you just meant sexuals. But I can't even tolerate like a stupid barista at this point. Exactly. I know. I know. You don't have, to, you don't tolerate a lot of nonsense because you're, you know, you've lived half a life, you know? No. I know you're thinking like, I just want to get railed. Yeah. <laughs> You have the look on your face. You're like, can we just make an arrangement? Am I wrong? Jesus. I mean, you, you're the one fucking saying it. You just said like, I but, just uh, want to But up. in my head, I went to this whole scenario. I was like, well, I'm obviously widowed. Tom's been dead for how long? And then like, like, like I have to go. But you can't just ask me to do these hypotheticals because I got to like rearrange my whole life. Like I'm a mother. I spend a lot of time with the kids. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, could you fucking just make it a little easier? <laughs> God. No, you're right. I wouldn't. I don't go understand why everyone's dumb. a fucking stupid idiot. So. <laughs> I had too much sodium at lunch. Is my face bloating? Yeah. Um, all right. So it's just if it's just banging though, obviously you can go for a while. Yeah. yeah of course. Yeah, but I can't tolerate stupidity now. You know? That's well, yeah. That's yeah. the entire. Premise. Plus, looks are fleeting. You know, once you hit your forties, you're like. I'm just happy to be here. Yeah. We're just alive. It's fine. It's fine. You give up on that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You want to see some wild shit? Always. So this clip came in. <laughs> it's just amazing. It, you know what's funny is when people, like the girl, remember the girl last week was like, here's how I manipulate men. And you go, the craziest thing is that just that you would share this. Yeah. Right? Like, now everyone knows, like, people know God. who you are. And they associate your, that behavior with you. You know, it's worse than cringe. It's like, here, I'm going to show you, I'm going to share with you how I do fucked up things. Yeah, it's terrible. Have you ever worked a nine to five or will you, yeah. or do you work a nine to five? Yeah. And a I lot sue every job I get. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What I do, I go on a job. I've sued Singular before AT&T. I got $40,000 out of them in 2006, July 6, 2006, for race discrimination and sexual harassment. Quid, quo, pro, sexual harassment. Just niggas cracking jokes on the job. Right? So what I did, I went and learned employ employment rights. I, my last two jobs, I got $10,000 out of that one through OSHA and got another $10,000 through, through OSHA. So what I do, I go find a job because I know they got niggas go be violating safety violations. So I'm going to go complain about safety violations. I know some bitch ass supervisor go get mad about me complaining and start retaliating against me. Then I'm going to make a call to OSHA and say, hey, they unsafe over here. And then I'm going to let them know, yeah, I'm the one called OSHA. And they go fuck with me. And then I'm going to make Make them pay me ten thousand dollars for retaliation. I get them every time. What's crazy is not just that this exists, but that you would tell. Yeah. So now, like now, how are you gonna get hired? Any like I this know. will get out. This will get out, dude. It's like I get them every goddamn time. I get the warehouse job. Uh, man, I work for a gun distribution company. I got they motherfucking ass. Yeah, I'm a bad motherfucker with suing jobs. So, so you go in there knowing you about to get yeah, a Yeah, I, I, man, if motherfucker know I'm going to go get a job, they already know he, he just, I'm the slip and fall nigga. I'm talking about I'm, I got a 100% success rate in suing every job I done work for, some through, either through the EEOC or through OSHA. And I be trying to tell other niggas, say, homie, get in on it. They be scared. And then when I get them and they get fired, they call me back. Say, man, you think, no, nigga, I tried to tell you. What's crazy is like, I feel like this could be used in like a deposition or something. Yeah. Right? When, um, if you try to sue someplace over some bullshit, maybe it's just that the money is so low for a major corporation that they just go, yeah, you know, pay them off. just take it. 
But it's just wild that you would put your face out there. I know. Telling that you do that. And also, has no one done a background check on this I guy? know. Where did you work before? <laughs> yeah. And you're like... Call the employer. I'm like, oh, you know, that guy sued us. Hey, man, 26 people said you sued them. <laughs> I know. Wow. And, and also, too, doesn't OSHA pick up on this guy suing multiple or calling in every uh, job? I'm sure, like, I mean, I'm okay. sure this is a type of employee yeah. that exi- that is like a flow... Where like OSHA can't really do away with like they just know that person's out there you know what i mean that type of employee so they're like there's like a hundred of these dudes floating around the country that just do this and they just know like this is oh yeah this is racket they just yeah there's just nothing you can really do when you read the employment rights homie they say race discrimination is broad it's so open in america homie but the average employee is scared to say something Sexual, sexual harassment. It goes on all the time. Niggas in the break room talking about who they fucked over the weekend. I'm sitting over there eating. I don't want to hear that shit. Nigga, I don't care about all them hoes. And you doing this every weekend? Well, at some point, I'm going to go to the HR lady and say, Larry and Leroy talking about women they sleep with every weekend. And they need to stop it. Well, guess what? They ain't going to stop it. And after that, I don't, I don't already complain about it because you have to make a complaint and let them know that you are uncomfortable with this conversation. Say, man, I don't want to hear that, homie. They think I'm just being a bullshit ass nigga. They don't know me. So you said telling you how to do it. This is a guidebook. This is how to yeah. sue. <laughs> so I let them know. So on January 2nd at 1230, lunch break, Larry and Leroy were talking about fucking Sheila. So I'm going to keep documentation. So when I go to HR, I'm going to let HR know. Now they're going to be fucking with me. Now, I'm- By the way, he looks Gosh. like he's sitting in like a CEO's chair. Yeah, I know. And he's like, you want, like, they were like, we want to interview the guy that knows how to sue people. <laughs> I know. He's like, come to my office, man. Yeah. I'm a snitch at work. So now they're going to be talking about me, making my work, work environment a hostile working environment. By this time, I'm going to the EEOC and get them. We're going to go to mediation. They're going to ask me what I want. Yeah, and then that's when you tell them what you want. Jesus. It's so it's so easy to get. <laughs> it's fucking Jesus. Incredible. Yeah. The only thing I, I think about is that he's got to be. You know, you talk about how exhausting it would be to like, like you know, to, to be that girl that yeah. manipulates guys. Feels like the mental energy it would take to remember that when you're at work, you have you're um you're a perfect employee because you got to be like the employee who. Remember that you're bothered by these things. Like you're just on. You have to be on. On. I know. That whole time and like being like, oh, I heard something. I got to document. I got to complain. Not laugh when people say the thing that they're just having a good time because you. Right. Because this guy is actually, I mean, he's really clever and he's, he's got very a clever, clever mind. And so did she. If only they could put these powers to good use. I know. It's always like that the criminal mind is yeah, such a waste of energy. It like, really is. I wish this guy could put it into something more productive i know and every time you tell them 10 bands well uh osha uh uh let me just say this uh the fort Worth <laughs> office at osha oh jeez i asked for fifty thousand last time damn they told me take this ten thousand and we go dismiss the case now i had a good case but they so sick of me winning <laughs> <laughs> say the motherfuckers so sick of me winning Sean. See. you say i can say this so goddamn be sick of me winning they say man take this ten thousand and you man just it but I'll be having legitimate cases, homie, because companies leave themselves open for that, homie. Jeez. He's got a cool shirt, too. What's it say? Uh, and he can say it. Oh, I, I didn't see it. I uh, only it says saw one Texas. One. <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> hey, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> says uh, Texas, nigga. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jeez. What does his hat say? Something ignorant. Yeah. Getting goals accomplished. Oh, is that what it is? I don't know. It's sad because he does have a good head on him. Yeah, he's he's a clever dude. Probably become a lawyer with this kind of brain. I know. He's got like he's like he's like you got to learn the rules. He learned. I was watching that. Um. Oh, sorry. Just to update his. Hat technically says nigga too. Oh, (laughs) it's an acronym. Oh, this is never ignorant. Getting goals accomplished. Uh. Nigga everywhere. Yeah. Cool. He really—he's a big fan of the brand. 
Some people like Nike and some people like Adidas. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, never Aww. ignorant getting goals. It is sad. Oh, he... There he is. Charleston White. That's not that long ago. Uh, teen Texas gang. Oh, he's a gang. Managed to reinvent himself after serving jail time for his juvenile transgressions. What is it? Okay, so I guess he posts videos a lot. He's 52. Wow, he looks good. Yeah. <clears throat> um, he came under fire regarding George Floyd and the late rapper DMX's death. I wonder what he said about them. White is the founder and CEO oh. of Helping Young People Excel, an organization dedicated to educating teens and helping to turn them from turning to crime. I mean, all right. How old is this photo? Because something changed from then until know. now. I don't know, man. That doesn't sound legit. So he, is yeah. in a, he, <laughs> he is in a CEO hmm. chair. Um, all right. Okay. Does it say that he's the the best at suing my story gives hope to those who have lost it <laughs> the tech he thanks the texas system for saving my life now a father of two he travels the country sharing my knowledge qualitative experiences maybe he stopped suing people i don't know i sure i was so. for all intents and purposes a murderer i didn't pull the trigger but i was responsible for the shooting death damn fuck he seems like actually a pretty good guy yeah He's yep. getting you too. <laughs> yep. I know. This motherfucker probably paid for this article. <laughs> yeah. He served seven years before his 21st birthday. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So this like explains a lot though, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Oh. That is wild. I love that this article is like, here's a great guy. And then we watch this other video of him being like, you got to learn when to tell motherfuckers that they've been sexually harassing you and get paid. Goodness gracious. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It is funny because it is like Jeez. the, it is like to, on full display what the criminal mind is. Yeah. It's very, it's like he's super intelligent. Yep. Clever. He know, and you go, he can go, you know, you go, you can go this way or this way. So yep. here he is in this video telling us like, here's how you can manipulate like employers mm -hmm. and, and sue and get money every time. And then he's like, I'm trying to help kids stay out of, you know, it's fucking wild. Yeah. I, my stepfather. <laughs> Same um, kind of mind. Yeah. It's interesting because, <laughs> well, it's actually true. So he, they're very good at learning rules. That's, that's what they do. Is that's, they, the, that's step one. Mm hmm. Yeah. So he would learn the codes and the rules and then the the cleverness is to how to get around it. What's the workaround? What's the way I'm not going to get caught doing the and thing? What did that manipulative girl say? That's step one. Learn the a rules. Ask questions yeah. to get information. Like she's, it's, a, yeah. it's another version of it. Like, yeah. Tell me about yourself. Yeah. And he would spend so much energy doing the workarounds as opposed to just following the rules, doing it the right way. Yeah. And like, what are you doing? He would do things like he would spend entire weekends. This is back when they would publish prices in the newspaper, like in Federated and all these companies, uh, yeah. electronics. He would buy an electronic at one company and then spend all weekend looking for the other prices and then find that guy and then take it to that guy and go, hey, you're fucking me over and then get the better price. Like, and you're Which like, he just again, spent. Remember, remember the girl? Yeah. And you're like, why? It's like, because it's about the win. Yeah. It, it's that psychotic. That's what getting psychopaths one over, do. Yeah. Because they like the thrill of the win, mm -hmm. of getting, of like that moment of being like, fuck you. That's actually like a dopamine yeah. trip to them. Yeah, you know? I know. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this about your stepfather. Sure. What was that dick sitch like? <laughs> <laughs> so I can tell you, I have an answer. Not firsthand. Okay. So my mother one time, they're both passed away now. They're mm -hmm. dead, so I can tell the story. Mm. My mother told me, at this point, they were sleeping in separate bedrooms. Yeah. And she said, Dean has an infection on his pickle. His pickle is infected. Some kind of skin problem. I don't want to touch his pickle no more. So I think at one point his pickle was okay and then something happened. So he had a decent, I mean, they were together a while. So 17 years. That's a decent dick sitch. That was a decent dick sitch, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
You don't stay with 17 years for nothing. That's true. Yeah. I think it was an average. I think I walked in on him nude once and I got like, ooh, and it was like an you don't average think. look normal. You don't think you did. No, I'm trying to remember the, the exact. It, Your was brain it? tried to block it out. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I walked in on him naked one time. Yeah. It was like was average. No. No. <laughs> Thankfully. A lot of stepdads that are, so I got lucky. Mine wasn't. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. Um, no, he, didn't, he I think it was no average, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Because my mom would tell me. She was very inappropriate. Like, she would have told me, oh, his pickle's too big. I can't have sex with the pickle. Really? Well, because she told me the pickle was infected. So, like, oh, right. I know I knew about my stepdad's dick skin. Why wouldn't she tell me if it was abnormally large or small? She would have said that. Yeah. She would have told me. Did she ever? No. About other dicks? Yeah. Um, no. Not in particular. Not that I can recall right now. I'm sure. Yeah. Like, she was vastly inappropriate with me. Yeah. Yeah. And he was, a re he was a real schemer, that guy. He was a mastermind. He was, he came from a very poor country. He came from India. Mm -hmm. And so when he came to America, it was like, wait a minute. All you have to do is like follow these bullshit rules and you can become a millionaire. Yeah. And that's what he did. He learned the rules and then just worked around all of them and became a millionaire. And he filed bankruptcy three or four, I think four times by the time he died. Jesus. So what he do was, so then he met my mom and what he would do is he, he'd, he'd ruin his credit doing these schemes. So he met my mom who had impeccable credit. And then he was like, you know, like, gosh, I had to file bankruptcy before. Can we use your credit? And then that's what he would do. He would marry these white ladies and then use their credit and my mother was the second lady he did that to. Nice. Yeah. Nice. But they built a fortune. Like they became a millionaire. We we got out of the valley. Like my mom and I lived in a shitty apartment. Like mm -hmm. she married Dean. All of a sudden we had Mercedes. We had yeah. nice house, nice things, fur jacket, good jewelry, nice thing. And then next thing you know, IRS came knocking because he didn't pay how taxes. Long did how long? How long did it take? The riches. Yeah. about six or seven years so every oh, seven years he'd file bankruptcy yeah. which is about what you can yeah yeah and then you don't have he's, to pay he's on maxing it out <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what he did nice yeah um scheme guy. you say your dad had schemes too uh nadav yeah he he was really in love remember when palm pilots came out yeah <laughs> so he loved palm pilots because it had like a calendar function on it some bullshit and so what he would do is he'd have a stack uh, like like he always had two ones that were fresh in the box, and so uh, sounds so dumb already. Yeah, yeah, they were fresh in the box, and as soon as one of them broke, like I forget exactly how it worked, but essentially he'd go to the store, <laughs> get a fresh receipt for like a newly purchased one, and then put the broken one in there, and then went back to the store and be like, "You guys sold me a fucking brick," and then it'd be like, "Oh, I'm so sorry." So he'd constantly just have like a replenished. <laughs> Stack of fresh palm pilots. <laughs> like I got one. <laughs> it was palm pilots are dope, dude. <laughs> yeah, such a ridiculous stupid scheme. scheme. Yeah, so immigrant. Yeah, you know, it's such a low immigrant ball. schemes are just so like. Hey, you know, sometimes you know you just don't know where your next palm pilot. That's true. From. true <laughs> yeah. But my dad did. I know. I think about you know my mom doesn't do schemes, mm. but it's so like third world the way her brain works. <laughs> you know. And it's just like, she's just always, I know what you're talking about. she's just always like, you know, like her, like it's her eyes on the wrong. I'm like, who gives a fuck about that? She's like, well, this guy said that it was 275 and over here it's three. So I'm like, you're talking about like a dollar or something? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like wasting the time to like make the point. I know. And I'm like, God, she's just fucking. I know. And like, because my. Everybody in my family, you know, we're all immigrants. So when I met you and you did stuff American, like normal way. Yeah. I was like, wait, I don't have to stress. Like, for instance, if I want to get the tires changed on my car, I wouldn't just fucking go to like the normal place. I got to go to the guy that my dad knows this right. Hungarian guy. And then he's got a deal and I'm going to do the thing. It was never, if I want to get car insurance, I have to go to a specific guy because I know that guy's Hungarian and he does a deal with this guy. Like, it was never just a normal thing yeah it took so many years even like fillings this tooth that i'm having replaced yeah <laughs> is because 
I got the feeling done by a Russian in Santa Monica and it was cheap because it was somebody my parents knew and they didn't have air conditioning, but it was a $20 filling. Like all this fucking stupid shit. Yeah. <laughs> but like later on in life, you're like, why did I waste so much energy? I could have just paid like $100, got a normal fucking filling and I wouldn't have a fucking crown today. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I did all this shit backwards because my parents did everything backwards. Yeah. I got this shit done when I was like 23. I had no money. Yeah, it's real. And then my stepmom told me, go to Dr. in fucking Santa Monica. It's cheap. Very, cheap. That's also super immigrant style. <laughs> like immigrants always have a connection to somebody from their community. Yes. Koreans, Chinese. That's the problem. Israelis, <laughs> Hungarians. They're all like, go to my, you know, keep it in the. Only my guy. Because yeah. I trust that guy. That guy's going to fuck you over. Everyone Americans else will fuck, fuck you, you over. over. Yeah, yeah. But not necessarily everybody fucks everybody over. It doesn't matter. Yeah, basically. And, you know, look, I mean, I, 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 I have, it's funny. It's like when everyone tells me like, you know, if you go to this guy, you get a deal. I go, great. I'll avoid that guy. <laughs> I know. I, I don't want a deal. I, Cause I feel like you get what you pay for. You've taught me that over. Yeah. And I think, you know, say no to deals. That's my philosophy. No, just do it, do it the right way. Then you yeah. do it once. Um, you're right about this immigrant mentality. Like my oh, mother yeah. was the same, like. Anything that was free, we had to like steal it, take it. I was always my stealing butter mother, knives. And my mother has shift come my <laughs> to three or four shows on this tour. Do you know that she comes when you're in the, when you perform in you know these theaters and stuff? You have a rider, and I have a pretty basic one, but basically every green room is stacked with water, um, some soda options there's like a meat tray there's a veggie tray right there's tea there, and then sometimes they have fruit things like that out it's pretty basic but anyway when you if you first come in and you're not expecting it you're like what's all this shit and you're like this is just the layout at every show every show she'll come backstage and she like hangs out and then she's like can i um, take some water and i'm like uh sure because i've also you know had a friend here, here you know take this take a water to go and i see her every time with her purse open and she's putting water like if there's like yeah. snacks yeah. you know oh they'll have like bags of like almonds she's just like stuffing and i'm like um what's up with the nine bottles she goes you said i could take it i'm like yeah but what are you <laughs> you don't even drink water that's true she you know? doesn't say drink water it's because it's free it's, it's free. It's free. It's free. Yeah. When you uh, we would go on vacations, she would uh, if you're in like the breakfast. Oh boy. In the lobby, sometimes they have those. You know, if it's a nice place, and they have some type of buffet kind of thing. They'll have pastries. Oh my god! So like you Don't know, even. She take a napkin, put like three or four pastries. Tom, she's had me them, steal them for her. Takes them to the room. She's like, now I have a. A cookie and a pastry for yeah. later. I'm like, Tommy, okay. remember the last cruise we went on with your parents? Yeah. Your mother had me stealing cookies for her yeah. the whole time. I had to get a big stack like this yeah. and a napkin in my and purse. She keeps them. Yeah, hoards them. I got a question. Yeah. Because my dad would do this. Uh, if you ever go to hotel rooms with your parents, did they ever just like have a suitcase just for shit that they're going to steal of, from the hotel room? So my is dad took my... pillows. That's so gross. That's, that's elite. Uh, so when my, my parents used to tell me this story a lot, my dad used to love telling it that he said, uh, <sighs> one of the first times they, they were at a hotel together, my mom started taking the towels and putting them in her purse or in her suitcase. And he was like, what are you doing? And she was like, I'm taking the towel. And he goes, you can't do that. And she was like, why? And he goes, cause it's their towel. And she goes, they'll get, they have more. And he's like, no, no, this is, it was like a Howard Johnson, you know? <laughs> He's like, it belongs to them. It's theirs. And she was like, because it's that um, this this place is has money. Yeah. So like, if some place has money, they can they can they don't mind. Mm -hmm. I don't have. I'm they're rich. I'm not. So I can take this. And he was like, not having it. So he was like, no. And she was upset that he called her out on stealing. Yeah. 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 My mom would make me steal all the time as a kid. Utensils. Utensils. It's I would steal crazy. butter knives from nice restaurants. She'd tell me to put it in my bag or in my put pocket. In really? I was stealing sugar. If we went out of sugar, I'd steal the sugar. And she'd make me steal it. 
Yeah, I was stealing shit all the time. So crazy. She's so, she was really cool. If my mother had just raised me, like as a single oh mother, for sure I'd be a thief. Criminal, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'd be like, oh, you want to know how to sue a motherfucking place, man? <laughs> Oh my God, right? Oh, but shit. first thing you got to do is learn the rules, right? <laughs> but you know what my mother would do, which is so funny? So Dean would make the money and my mom would get a credit card and go get cash advances out uh -huh. on their mutual accounts and just like hoard cash, their cash. And then like she'd meet me in the bathroom. Yeah. Like when we would all be having dinner, she's like, come meet me in the bathroom. And then she would just hand me like 300 bucks. And be like, don't tell anybody. I'm like, what? It was always a big secret, you know? Like, and keep this? Yeah, keep this money, this money, keep this money. And then she'd hide money under my name and stuff. That's not, stealing it from my stepdad. It's fucking strange. <laughs> stealing it from my stepdad. That was the weirdest part. Like, he's your husband. You don't have to steal it from him. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, both your names are on the accounts, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's so crazy. It's such a weird marriage, but they lasted for seventeen years. They were it good is for a each long other. time. They were good for each other. They yeah. were both psychos, and and they fit together. They loved fucking people over together. <laughs> that was their jam. Yeah, kind of like our love of of gross shit. Their yeah. love was like let's ruin someone's life. Ruin, yeah. Ruining people. It's very cool. It's true. Um, you ready? I'm for. I want to laugh. Oh no! Here we go. He's fucked up. He is fucked up. Oof. Oh, that that hurts. I'm not a lot. describing it in a dog. Make Tom describe it. This is his favorite. This dude is segment. hauling ass down this. Is that gas powered? <sighs> like it, it. It sounds like an engine is on. Maybe it's another. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's, it doesn't like it sound an electric like it? bike. Like um. Like. Yes. I Ooh. think there's a bike behind it. You know what it is? Maybe that bike was pulling it. Oh, that's disconnected. Oh. You know that the gas, yeah. the gas, right, to pick up speed. Yeah, because it Smart. looks like it's it's going so fucking fast. See? Yeah, you're right. <gasps> he fuck. His ribs are cracked for sure. Pretty funny. Um, yeah, pretty good. <laughs> oh well, well let's make some videos i want to see them i want to laugh <laughs> All right. show me your boobs oh this is bad already i can see this Foo. yeah it, he this is good um this guy's trying to like drift on a bike and you can tell he's not like right away you can tell he's not like high level at it like there's guys that can just do it without even and he got up like pretty quick there where he's like, I'm all right, but it's probably torn his ACL. Oh, I'm least. guessing. Yeah. He flips yeah. over the bike. Yeah. Right he's, there. he's lucky, dude. I yeah. was lucky. Nah, he's going to have reconstructive knee surgery. <laughs> um, Man, that was terrible. Oh, I love these. <gasps> Look how strong that fucking thing is. Cut the shirt. <gasps> he's got his leg. He's got uh, his leg. Oh, he's going to rip that shit off, bro. <gasps> he's sideways. He's biting. He's going to bite through that now. I didn't know that they were cap like that they did this. Is this is an orangutan. Yeah, this is a. We should be clear. This is a non-American zoo. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Yep. Jesus, I don't. How strong? Could you see how strong orangutans Very are? It's not. an orangutan, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Wait, let's see how he spells orangutan. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh. Yeah. Orangutan. Got him. They can lift up to 500 pounds, which is about three Fuck. times their own body weight. <laughs> almost, they have almost four times the bite force of a human and only Fuck. slightly lower than that of a lion. Um, 
around five to seven times stronger than humans. The um, that bite because it looked like he was, he was getting ready to take a bite out of his leg, out yeah. of his knee. Mm-hmm. That's um, that's what I wish we would have on video right now. <laughs> Look how sharp those teeth are. It's no joke. Yeah, that is no joke. No. Um, yeah, this is probably like like this started with this guy just being like, "Hey, uh, let's see what this orangutan is doing." <laughs> Hey, look. See? He put his hands out. Stupid. I'd take that fucking that, shirt off. He probably off. saw that as a threat, you know? Yeah, of course. Fuck, and Almost he's like, get the, the other guy. He didn't like that. He didn't like that. And he grabs his leg? That's sinister. Yeah. Grabbing his leg. But he's grabbing him with his legs and arms. Yeah, yeah. Shit, dude. He's got four hands. Hey man, could you call Kyle real quick? Oh man, that was real panic in that guy's voice, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, I have a question. Yeah. Which might be stupid, but I don't care. Yeah. Why? Because we are from these animals, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. why don't we have stronger bite power and that like, grip power? Like, how did we? We should have evolved with that stuff. Wouldn't no. we be awesome predators? No, we would have we would have evolved the other way because life became easier. easier. You're right. As humans, right? Tools, tools, opposable thumbs, weapons, e- right? But hunting, like, hunting. Uh, man, um, you know, two hundred thousand years ago had a ten times greater sense of smell. Oh. You know, could run faster, was probably stronger. Like all the things, because you needed those. Dude, yeah. we're going to evolve into fucking amoebas because mm-hmm. we don't use anything anymore. We don't even use a sense of direction. I, I saw something one time that said that, I mean, it's not going to be obviously in, in our lifetimes, but that we would lose um, eventually through evolution pinky toes. I've heard this. Because you don't even, use you know, them. really use, like, yeah. They were, I'm using at one mine time, right probably now. Be, it's a grip or I'm something. I'm using mine right now. Yeah. What's up? What? What are you tipping? No, Chad Ch- is laughing still at my Google from earlier at ship and space people. When you guys oh, yeah. said we were going to evolve, I was thinking, oh, yeah, we're going to evolve into the Wally ship and space people. Probably. The ship and space people. Yeah. Ship and space and people. Iowa, it up and if you want to see it. Ayahuasca? Iowa. Oh, wait. Ayahuasca. And my favorite at lunchtime today? Oh, my God. Why don't you tell? It's so fucking amazing. He's wearing this uh, shirt that Johnny Pemberton made. Johnny makes these great shirts that um, are like <laughs> mega corporations um, that don't advertise. And he does them in the font or style of a company that does, right? <laughs> so he did like Moderna, which does like, you know, the pharmaceutical company. He'll do it in the Metallica font, things like that. So he was wearing one today. I think it was Halliburton. Yeah. And it was done in the Chick-fil-A font, I yeah. think. Yeah, Pemberton and makes great shirts. He does great shirts. Um, but what did you, like, how did it come? You said I that, was like, oh, yeah, I like this one. And then I also have his Goldman Sachs one. That's done in that's a. That's done like the Bass Pro Shop. Bass Pro Shop. Bass Pro. If you like bass guitars, <laughs> head on over to Bass Pro Shop. Well, and, okay, and here's the deal. Yeah, they are I'm, spelled the same. They are spelled the same. And I, too, am guilty. I thought Smart and Final was like. Yeah, yeah, you're smart, but all sales, all are, sales final. are final. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not one to, to throw stones, but I will say the Bass <laughs> Pro logo has a big fish in it. Yeah, yeah. it has a big bass on it. Yeah, big bass. <laughs> and it's, a, it's pretty widely known. Right, and we do live in Texas, so you you see those Bass Pro shops a lot. You do. I want to go base fishing pretty soon. Yeah, think. you should. Yeah, I have a question for Nadav, actually. Was it that you didn't know that the that word was bass or bass? Or mm. did you do you not know the difference b- between a bass and a bass? Like, do you think a bass fish is called a bass fish? I know, No, I know that there's a bass, but it's it's also like kind of like uh, like tomato, tomato, you know? It's just like, you know what I'm talking about. No. Mm. Don't, don't really understand the explanation there. Let's get to this uh, <laughs> next one. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, fuck. This is going to be bad. (sighs) That was terrible. He's really fucked up. He is really fucked up. 
God. So there's a strong man in a competition. Looked like kind of like amateur level. I don't know if I'm wrong, but lifting up those kegs, you know, they, they do those like keg tosses and keg carries. And he got it on his shoulder and he, and then he just like collapsed under it. I mean, really pulls it up. Oh man. And then goes to pick it up. Oh, and he drops it on his leg. That thing, what is those, what does that weigh? Like, what is a keg way? They're heavy as shit when they're full. They're oh, yeah. so fucking heavy. 140 pounds, yeah. Shit. Yeah, the empty weighs 30. Whew. Fuck. That is, yeah, to drop that on yourself is pretty... That was Man. another funny, funny sketch. Yeah. <laughs> that was the only one that made me sad. The other ones made me laugh. You know, the, the bike, the, the donut on the motorcycle, and the guy getting eaten by the orangutan was that great. That was amazing. Yeah. I wasn't LOLing, but that was a cool video. Yeah, it's funny. I saw that video today on Instagram and sent it to Zolo. Oh. And it was already in here. That's so special. Yeah. Synergy. Good job, Zolo. Yeah, good work. Yeah. God damn. Yeah, that's pretty great. God, that made me happy. Uh, I like seeing animal violence. I think that's my new favorite lane. Yeah. Is people getting fucked up by animals. You shouldn't mess with animals. No, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. I don't like it. Um, we started watching Love on the Spectrum, the US one. We just started it. So we're not yeah. deep into it. Uh, first of all, I think I'm a bigger fan of autism in Australia. Me too. And just, um, <laughs> I just... I enjoyed that cast. I did too. Um, but I do like <laughs> watching that show. It just is sweet, so endearing. You pointed out they're just they're so vulnerable <clears throat> and they're yeah. they're unaware of like being self conscious about you know your vulnerabilities. Right? I agree with you, Tom. For some reason, the Australian version was sweeter and more endearing and less like fake produced. The American one, it was like. It's just it's overproduced, and I like I like really getting into the details of these people. Yeah, I don't want them feeling like like they're just ponies, you know. Like what yeah. what's the, what's the weird thing he's into? Like I, it felt too exploitive in the U.S. version. Yeah, and more endearing in the Australian. But I did like their vulnerability. I no a spoiler alert. Can I say what? Well, they're just so open. They're so open with their feelings that like last night I found myself embarrassed because they were so open and I turned to you and I was like, oh, I'm so embarrassed with these, the, the openness of their feelings. I don't think yeah. I could be this expressive. And I thank you for that. <laughs> I thank you for not being that expressive. I don't want to get to know someone on that level, you know, <laughs> <laughs> keep some shit to yourself. Well, that does, that does kind of, that is the question, you know, is that, um, am I, should I be more autistic or am I shut off? Could I use a dose of autism? <laughs> Depends on what you mean. Meaning, should I take a little bit of that, that attunement, emotional attunement and ability mm. to be vulnerable? That's a pretty neat thing. I do wish I had it. I'm a little, I'm a little envious of these kids. Yeah, yeah I hear you. Um... What? Nothing. What were you thinking? I was just looking at you, waiting for you to say something else. Well, I was thinking of Solomon. So Solomon's like the cute one. He's very positive. And yeah. he's like, I'm into the law of attraction. And I thought that was really cute. And yeah. I liked Solomon with his match. I forget that girl. There are very name, particular Danny. traits, really interesting quirks. Like and a lot of times on this show, if you've never watched it, when a, a person, you know, is being introduced on the show, they'll sometimes say, this person likes these things and doesn't like these yeah, other things. Like like very specific things. Like likes the sound of waterfalls and you know, likes um likes the likes the way velvet feels. Yeah. Doesn't like rock music. Yeah. Doesn't Whist like whistling. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. But I do like watching them date and I want the problem with it seems to be in dating with autism is that 
you have such highly specific interests. <laughs> yeah. And like if the if you're the person you're dating doesn't share those highly specific interests, then you can't connect. Yeah. Because they're they get really dialed into specific topics. And if if you're not talking to them about that topic, they're just not interested. A lot of that. I mean, you know, they call it a spectrum for a reason, right? So yeah. there's there's wide range of um of people on and, and not on the show and yeah, it focuses on kind of the ability to connect on a romantic level. They're all trying to find someone Aww. to be with. It's very sweet, though, when it does work out. Like, there was a really sweet date on the one we watched where on the date, this one right here, on this date, this girl's like, I love you. <laughs> like, she just met him. It's right? a spoiler. It's okay. It's fine. Wait, nobody yeah. makes fun of Tom when he gets it away. That's what I was holding back earlier. I didn't want to spoil Oh, really? But if you're saying it, then let's talk about it. Because I, I love that she did that. It was adorable. Yeah. It was adorable. She goes, I'm in love with you. Yeah. <gasps> and then they, they did some real producer shit where he's like, I got to I gotta get up. Because sometimes uh, on these dates, at least on the Australian version, people get overwhelmed. Yeah. You know, and they're like, I got I to gotta go. But it was, it was a little trick, I think. It was a little production I trick. I agree. And I that's what I don't enjoy about the U.S. version is I don't want to see the producer trick. I don't need suspense. I'm interested in, in what it's like to be autistic and date. So yeah. show me what really happened in real time. You know, because I'm curious. Like, yeah, what? why did he get overwhelmed? What about autism makes you overwhelmed? You know, yeah. like, I want to learn about it. So yeah. it, it bums me out when they overproduce this shit. Yeah. These two are cute. They went on a zoo date. And they're looking at all the animals. That That's was sweet. Cute. Yeah. Talking about their favorite animals and shit. Very yeah. cute. Very cute. But God, this, the star of this show is Michael from Australia. He's the best. He's the best. Yeah. He's so cute. And he's I don't think we finished. On. We never finished watching season two. I know. I think because it got too bummery for me. Some of it felt too sad. Really? I get sad for them. Well, I get here. sad when it doesn't work out. Let me cheer you up. Let me cheer you up. So why is your old mirror saying he got tired of the good old boy <laughs> system? Can you explain that? Uh, huh? Oh, boy. Well, I'm not part of the good old boy system. God, I hope you're not, because I got a good old boy sitting right in front of you inside the club. <laughs> Nothing from none of you from now on, okay? Not one little flinch. For starters, I'm serious when I tell you, we're going to have that chat with some people back in Nebraska next week, right, Chief? You're going to give me a chance, right? <laughs> if you even flinch, guess what? That badge is coming off him, too. Well, you cannot stop my words. Mister, shut your mouth. Okay. We're talking, okay? Uh, shut your you mouth. Shut up. Okay. So, wait, 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 wait. I'm going to tell you, okay. shut up. We're talking. Stop. Go ahead. <laughs> nice. I mean, this is the gift that just keeps on giving. Fed smoker, excuse me, Herc, is talking to the mayor... And the entire city, look at the uh, counselor Mahler to the, to the like, left. What? It was like, <laughs> they've never seen anything like this. Then you don't realize there's an audience behind him. There's like 15 people, including the chief of police, I think. And he tells them if they, if they flinch, there's going to be a problem. And if the cop flinches, there's going to be a badge coming off. And everybody's like, what the fuck? And then he tells somebody else on the city council to shut up. Oh God! Dude, like he thinks he's in a Burger King right now. Like the way he's no, treating these he's, people. he's 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 crazy. He's fully tweaked right now. Got his shades on. Oh my God! He's got his camera on them, and he faces it to himself. And man, you see how bored the sheriff was? He was like, "Yeah, fucking this guy." Yeah. He's like, "I've dealt with these types before." Fucking crazy. Yeah. Anything will be addressed to me. I'm talking to you. There will be no. Uh, no personal attacks. No, there is none. No, I'm no telling you facts. Attacks. Before I leave, before I leave, I got one less present. Okay, this is it. Yeah. Okay. This is kind of like my work goes. Ready for this? This last. I'm used to cops being poo poo. Hear that? I'll kill you business. Hear that? Hear that? There we go. Hear that? I'll kill you business. Better not have been taped and I'll kill you. You see, I'm used to cops talking about killing me and putting guns to my head and stuff. That's what drives me. Man, it drives me. Drive me right to right the hell in prison, brother. I'll put you there, too. Tighten up your game coming around my car. It's my horse. 
You guys want to come and square dance on record, Chief? I'm open all day long. I'll put you in prison, brother. I'll put you there for the rest of your lives, okay? Take it easy. That was right. See the looks on their faces? Like... Yeah. Every, it's like a, a Coen Brothers movie. Like, you know? They're like, uh... That was thoroughly engaging. I was like thoroughly into this movie. Man, that would have been the shit to be in that room. Oh, fuck, you're like, what is happening? Yeah. He talked about prison. And he's like, you want to fucking... And he started to walk towards the cop saying that shit at the end there. That was fucking rad. Oh, man. Everybody misses Herc so much. Tighten up your game. Tighten up your game. It's my horse. You guys want to come and square dance on record, Chief? I'm open all day long. I'll put you in prison, brother. I'll put you in prison, brother, to that Chief. Woo! I mean, if that doesn't get you fucking fired up, I don't know what the hell you can. Touching my camera through the Put fence, you faggot. Yeah. Amen. Shout out to Herc. That was terrible. It was really upsetting. I thought that was great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Huh? Huh? What'd you say? Nothing. Yeah, I'll put you in prison, too. Same kind of energy here, you know? What's up? Well, I'm, we're servicing about 25% of the Get community. Get the fuck out of my neighborhood. It's 8.30 okay. at night, and it's too late to be hey, ringing doorbell. Hey, don't go the fuck home. Hey, don't touch me. Go fucking home. Boy. Isn't that rad? Do not home touch or me. I will fuck you up. I will, I, will, I will sue you. Go ahead. Okay. Get the fuck hey, out of my neighborhood. Hey, don't fucking touch me. Hey, don't touch me. Hey, get out of here, dude. You cannot touch me. I'm calling you. Do know who hey. I am? Call them. Call okay. anybody. I will call them. Call cops. your reinforcements. Dude, you're fucking crazy. Hey, you're crazy, man. Get you're, out of my you're fucking crazy. Hey, Who do you work for? Get the fuck off me. Tell me who you are. I'm fucking Eco Shield, dude. Get off of me. Hey. Get out of here. Hey, get off of me, dude. Wow. Yeah, cool. Yeah. The Dolph said he thinks that, that could be me. Mm, yeah. In a few years. Five see, more years. I see you like that. Yeah. What? I could see it. Like, look, you're not there now. No. You know, but like two, three years from now. Definitely. This guy? Mm -hmm. Let's say some kid rolls up on our, I mean, someone rolls up on our children. Would you oh. This guy just came out of his house because this guy's he's working the neighborhood. He's the eco shield guy. Oh. This kid wasn't doing anything. It was door to door sales. Kids. But kids? What, what if this guy like <clears throat> knocked on your door at eight thirty p.m. Like mm -mm, that, that's too late. That, that'd rile you up, right? I don't think like this. <laughs> but it would rile you up. Too late. Eight thirty is too late. I mean, I don't even like when Amazon ding dongs at eight. I'm like, what are you fucking crazy? Get out of here. I don't think I'd love it, but I don't think I'd be like, what the fuck? I'll beat your ass if you fucking. I'm out of here. Where's your you? car? Huh? Where's your car? It's Get coming. In and go home. It's coming. This is for my own protection. Do not come back near my house. That is assault, Do sir. Do not come near my house. That is assault. I will assault you. Okay. That's nothing. Okay, that is a threat. Yeah. Okay. It is a threat, All asshole. Right. Can Respect. you go to his page? It's a uh, Rick Drip player. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like the, I think that's the person who uh, filmed it. Yeah, if anybody knows what happened to Rick Drip player, what the full hmm. story is, I'd love to know. I really would. I feel like it'd be fucking amazing to know. I do feel this way when people are in my neighborhood at night. Like when the sun is going down, go fuck yourself. Don't yeah. knock on my door. Don't don't knock on my door. Why are you knocking on my door? I know. For anything anymore. This is yeah. not the time of door knocks anymore. Yeah. Don't fucking call me. Don't knock on my door, homie. Don't deliver no fucking package. And don't knock on my fucking door when you're delivering the package. That makes me crazy. Yeah. When they ding dong and leave the pack. Like, don't worry about it. The dog's going to bark. I know you're fucking here. I know. Too late. I mean, there's just a time where you shouldn't be doing that. Also, too, er too early is fucking wild, too. When there's Oh, Amazon the other day wanted to come in at like 7 a.m. I was come like, on, dude. Come on, man. Come on. Get Let people life. get their day started. Okay. Did you hear the storm this morning, Storm Dad? A little bit. A little bit. There was. There was. A, 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 I heard thunders. I don't know. Oh, I thought you'd be Sounds excited. So, well, I didn't really hear it that well. Maybe I was just tired. Yeah. Um, you remember, of course, 
Machines were thin. Machines were thin. They got a gun. They got a gun. Yeah, I got a gun. Terminator gun. Yeah, machines were thin. Machines were thin. T16. 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 Working T16. on my flow. 100%. T16. Hmm. Machines were thin. thin. Machines thin. were thin. Um, just a great, great original song. Greatest rapper um, of all time. Sometimes we get updates on what he's up to. Oh, man. Blah, blah, blah. Blipty, blipty, blah, blah, blah. Blipty, blipty, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, everyone in the dark? The blah, 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 blah. I'm that vampire one. I'm the lonesome one. You got that ghost trap. You got that ghost trap. I'm shining as day one. You know, it'll be interesting to find out. I like this. Who's a better speller, him or Nadav? Because <laughs> I think he doesn't really have a rich vocabulary. <laughs> but I wonder if he's a better speller than Nadav. Uh, you know? I'll take him on. I'll put money on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. I'll, so, get it. I'll get it on that action. But you got you to gotta give him the same hard words that you give me. Oh, yeah. No, like, no. I, I wonder how he spells ayahuasca. It would be pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah. So is that juggalo makeup or crow makeup? Uh, it kind of feels like he's just doing like his own version of his uh, Joker makeup, you know? like Oh, Joker. I mean, I guess, you know, it's makeup, right? So it kind of probably... I think like, I recall him being a, being a hatchet man, a juggalo. He is a juggalo, yeah. but is that juggalo makeup? Because it feels like very Joker-esque, right? With the smile up. It's versatile for sure. Yeah. It's well, cool as fuck. Let's just say it that. is cool. And you know what? I like the theme of this one because it's darker than before. I, what I like about him is he always goes dark, but not depressing. It, there's always, um, you feel the, the heaviness yeah, in very his heavy. content. Yeah. And I like that he's still at it. I mean, it's, I think he needs to step up product, like putting out more content. Cause that's, that's the way you get better is you just keep trying. Oh, right. It's like, don't give us these fucking three year windows. Yeah. yeah. Like I want to hear a song a week. Bro, I would say we do a podcast every week. Yeah. Come on. Step it up. Step it up. Dude. So like for this. We're practicing on my music. We're okay. practicing on my music. Blah, blah, blah. Beep, 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 blah, blah, blah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. Rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. Rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. You got that ghost drop. You got that ghost drop. Trying to work on my song. Trying to work on my song. Making my, making my shine. Making my shine, y'all. Making my shine, y'all. Blah, blah, blah. I liked it. Very cool. He really enjoyed it. I would, one thing I would say is maybe turn down the TV in the background before you start your raps. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. You, you want audio to be yeah. clean. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I liked everything unless, about it. You know, unless it's part of the mission. Unless oh, like you say, like it's a sample. Oh, I mean, just like it's part of the sound you're going for. Right, like Background, he's sampling. Yeah. Yeah. It's like chaos, like oh, yeah, the yeah. TV's playing. I mean, I think somebody like him likes chaos, you know? Yeah. That look is very... Blah, blah. Chaotic. Blah. Yeah. Okay. Well, a um, lot happened today, that's for sure. God, we learned so much. Fuck. We learned uh, about Bass Pro Shop. The glove is back. The glove is back. That's exciting. Most important. Um, saw some funny videos, Herks, probably maybe the most surprising, incredible Hold on. video ever. I'm sorry to do this, but before we go, may I please tell you my Pajitsky effect that I had? Yeah, of course. <laughs> this is so fucking R worded. Are you ready? Yeah. So I recently got into eye masks, meaning I sleep with them when it's bright in hotel yeah. rooms. Fantastic. Yeah. I just started. I know I'm a big fan. Right. I just started 40, oh, and that too. 45 years of my life, I never wore one. Now, when I get on airplanes, I like to, I like, I, I don't like when people leave the shades up. So I'll wear my sunglasses. The sunglasses are often tight, making my head hurt by the end of like a three hour flight. It's like pushing in. Guess what I could do on a flight? What? I could wear my, you know what? What do they just call the Sleep mask? Tired? Yeah, sleep mask on the airplane. I could wear a sleep mask on an airplane to take a nap. Yeah, I've done it many times. Right. I've never even, it, I never conceived of it. Oh, you're like, I wear sunglasses. I wear sunglasses because it's the daytime. That's a nighttime activity. They, yeah. Full, a fucking idiot. Fully talked. Fully talked. Yeah. That being said, come see me do stand up, guys. 
Washington, D.C., the D.C. Improv, July 15th and 16th, July 29th and 30th, and Man Friend Disco at Cobb's Comedy Club, July 30th, I'm sorry, 31st, one night in Seattle at the Neptune Theater, Cleveland, Ohio, August 12th and 13th, uh, Minneapolis Tits, August 26th and 27th, one night only in Brooklyn at the Bell House, Zanies in Nashville in October, and then Jew Dork Titties at Caroline's in November. ChristinaPOnline.com for tickets. Thank you. I will be at Ball Arena uh, July 24th in Denver, Colorado. It's my second show there. Um, I added uh, Australia, New Zealand dates. There's more international dates coming. A um, bunch of shows that are on sale um, all over the country. Go to TomSegur.com slash tour. Thanks so much. Thanks for everybody getting the book. Um, really appreciate it. We will be back next week. Have a great week. Bye, Jeans. Hey, Mommy. This is my struggle. like that full episode of your mom's house are your jeans as high and tight as it can be i doubt it watch some more clips dude look at that one watch that one right here or maybe here maybe here maybe <laughs> maybe you should subscribe that way every time a new video gets posted you'll be notified stay in the know jeans subscribe now <laughs>